my name is Liam Crowes and I'll be presenting my uh, shiny app that I've been uh, working on for the past six months at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience. I'm a third year mathematics student at QUT and I've just got me working with the data and finding efficient ways to visualise it. So this is kind of my process of going through it. So background to single cell sequencing. So off in 1996, moving up to 2008, microarray, microarray technology. And then we moved towards the more modern single cell RNA sequencing data. Um, from this graph uh, that you can see down the bottom, um, going into 2017, we've increased the amount of data that's being produced uh, exponentially. And that's only uh, going to increase as we uh, continue on into the future. And so really kind of a big problem now is coming up with efficient uh, ways to visualise the data and get it, uh, get it out there effectively. And even for those who are not necessarily computational computational biologists. So single cell sequencing um, is, uh, we're, we're taking the expression levels across a uh, population of cells for every single cell and there's various types of biological questions that we can answer including new cell type identifications, uh, finding cell type specific disease gene markers and the inference of, cel of cellular programming networks across cells. And data sets range from millions of cells um, equivalent to thousands of times bigger than standard RNA-seq data sets. This is kind of the workflow uh, that you normally see for uh, single cell RNA-seq. You start off with your sample of whatever tissue you want from uh, let's say a heart sample to a whole blood to a cell culture, run it through a library prep, sequence it, do some processing and then you end up with an expression matrix which is what we'll be focusing on today. So expression profiling is a pretty important uh, part of the single cell sequencing process. Um, what you can see here is 43,000 cells over five days, um, where at each, each day they've, been, they've had their expression profiled. Um, so you can see the, the gene that's being presented is POU5F1, which you can see is highly expressed in days zero, and then gradually uh, uh, becomes less and less expressed going forward. So the advantages of using single cell seq data is that we can get a measurement for every cell which allows us to pick up cell to cell variation uh, to compare between, uh, between samples. So normally we'd end up with a cancer sample, normal sample, compare the means and but with single cell sequencing we can, uh, we can use various clustering methods to find out uh, what specifically they are and we can find out um, any kind of abnormalities in the data set. So this is what an expression matrix looks like. It's just a big Excel spreadsheet essentially of um, just lots of numbers really. Um, you can see how many rows there are. There's only about 18,000 genes um, out of 22,000 that would normally be uh, pre present in the human genome. Each column represents a cell that would be a sequence anywhere from 10,000 to 100. Uh, to up to a million and the values of the expression vary from zero all the way up to whatever the highest value would be. High resolution, it's also high resolution, high dimensional, high levels of noise, lots of zero count data and normally each cell uh, uh, normally expresses about a thousand to eight thousand genes. So once that step has been completed there's normally a clustering algorithm normally um, <clears throat> separates them into distinct populations and once that's been done we can find out uh, which uh, cell types are present in that data set um, where each, uh, each cell is mapped one to one to a cell type. There's only about four or five uh, cell types within a sample. Um, so what does Skiva do? Skiva does um, everything here. It uh, combines the key components of a single cell analysis of visualization, ordering, normalization, quality control, genetic filtering, and accessing uh, gene network databases, all while doing this in a way to make it uh, interactive and as user-friendly as possible. So the Skiva workflow, this is a um, <coughs> uh, kind of a snapshot of the uh, interface that you'll be working with. You've got the data ingestion step, quality control, single gene visualization and analysis steps, <clears throat> and then lastly, gene list analysis. 
Um, so now I'll go into the specifics of each step. So uploading the expression matrix um, is what you would have seen before. You can upload it as a Excel document, tab separated, anything kind of like that. Um, the app can currently take up to 10 gigabytes worth of data, um, and you can also run it locally if you want to scale it up even further. You can also have to upload a cluster matrix of your predetermined uh, cell types, um, and it shows, shows that you've got the right amount of cells to get the uh, a nice correlation between the two. So in the quality control steps, we have some graphs that show the uh, distribution of the total expression within, within and between cell clusters to make sure that we are, are, are returning the data that you expected to see. Um, and if not, then um, it allows the user to go back and uh, uh, redo some of the uh, pre-processing. <coughs> we can also see the dropout which is a key problem in uh, single cell sequencing because lowly expressed genes are often not measured by the technology, um, especially when genes are at a low level. They'll be detected in fewer cells and uh, won't be picked up. So we want to make sure that we get a nice uh, even distribution here. We can also um, search for genes. So what you can see here is genes um, and they've, been, uh, they've had their mean and their variance taken across the rows and where it allows for users to uh, sort through them to find um, genes that determine the structure of the data with high mean, high variance, um, and they're normally the most informative genes that normally explain the most variance within the data set. Normalization and outlier removal, there are multiple methods that we use here, um, but uh, essentially single cell is data is very noisy. So removing the outlier cells and genes allows us to keep the most informative data um, to find the more significant biological variation. Normalization techniques, um, there are three uh, being implemented here. Um, CPM, uh, count per million, quantile, and relative log, uh, log uh, expression. Um, this can help remove the technical bias due to the sequencing depth. Okay, so this is getting into the fun part. You, there's a search bar. You can search for your favorite genes. Isn't that fantastic? Everyone's got a favorite gene, so now you can easily search for it and you don't have to um, go to any kind of other databases. You can look within your own data set and it'll, it'll search for it and bring it out and then you can do your visualization on that. And that's kind of the key aspect of using uh, Shiny. So the first plot here is a sunburst plot. Um, it's really good for looking at the, uh, the subpopulations between, um, between your samples. Um, find the relative amount of expression in, in cells compared to cells that are off. So the bee swarm spot, uh, bee swarm plot, um, to show the various distributions of, um, of the expression and also uh, using the colors to show how much uh, certain cells are being expressed and how highly they're being expressed. This is a density, density plot of the expression with a log 2 scale. Um, and this can kind of, what you see in the top left corner is of the, uh, the, whole, the whole row, the whole row of the gene. And then the one on the bottom right is being zero filtered where the zero uh, data set, well, the cells that aren't expressing anything have been removed and then another plot has been done. So you can really kind of see the differences in expression between uh, different cell types. Um, there are also a couple of statistical tests. The kruskal wallace test for a uh, difference in, well, st statistical difference um, in distributions between all the clusters. And then we also do a pairwise kolmogorov smirnov test to, um, so between each um, subpopulation, we can find out whether there's significant uh, differences between the uh, expression levels, and then a likelihood ratio differential expression test between cell types. Um, the next feature is to upload a gene list. A gene list is normally um, after single uh, gene analysis has been done. The user can select genes from, well, to form a gene list based on prior knowledge of the data set. So they upload it, um, which may be important to answering biological questions for how many genes they want. And one of the first ones uh, that comes up is the reactome pathway. 
So the reactome pathway performs an enrichment test for gene list um, for uh, your pathway analysis. Um, also represents biological pathways within your gene list. Functional pathways of the gene list um, basically uh, shows the same thing but links um, with which specific gene uh, um, uh, is linking to uh, the, the specific biological um, effects. And then we also have a clustering and heat map uh, view of your selected gene list, um, which, which kind of gives a good, nice overview of the expression um, differentials um, between, between different uh, genes. And then there's also a clustering algorithm in implemented as well. So the target users for this app are primi primarily for biologists who either are too stubborn to learn R or just can't learn it, I don't know. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's essentially, yeah, um, it's, it's all about the ease of interface. It's all about making it easy for uh, new people or people who are just, just biologists to really kind of learn and figure out what's inside their data set. Um, so um, each of the applications uh, of packages here, Shiny, um, absolutely love it. It's great. Um, Streamlined, intuitive layouts, um, really efficient, um, really quick um, upload and analysis. Uh, Plotly for the interactive graphs. So each of the graphs that you've seen um, are totally interactive. You can zoom in, you can sub subplot, you can um, you can stretch the graph, and you can also download it as PNG. We also use iGraph for the uh, interactive network, and we also use Sunburst. Um, which is a JavaScript, which is, you can use a mouse to overlay um, on, the, on, the first, on the first plot that we had. So that's kind of the, that's, that's basically Skiva. Um, I'd like to thank my supervisors, uh, Joseph and Quan, really helped me get, uh, get this up and running, and then everyone else in the lab for um, their great input that they've had. So how can you access Skiva? Well, you can access it as a web app on its own. Um, if you go to that top link, it's run on a UQ server where you can upload your data set um, and you can run the same kind of visualizations. Or, or you could go to the GitHub page where you can download it, download the entire data set, um, the entire program run it with this one line, run GitHub Skiva IMB Computational Genomics Lab, and that will run it locally on your computer once you've got the various uh, packages and libraries installed. Um, yeah, so that, that's it from me. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the question was whether it was human specific. Um, no, it doesn't have to be human specific. Um, the data set that I was using was cardiomyocyte data set. Um, but you can upload anything as long as it's got the general form of the expression matrix with the genes as the rows, cell IDs at the top, and then you need to upload a, um, the cell type, um, popular, uh, the cell type with a one-to-one -one ratio. So yeah, it can uh, uh, it can be pretty easily generalised. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the question was whether we were going to uh, put a clustering tool in. Um, we did experiment with putting clustering tools in, but we found it was really computationally expensive um, for the size of data sets that we were looking to put up with put up um, with the server that we were using I think it yeah we tried we tried clustering and it just timed out the server <laughs> which um, is uh, we, we don't want that happening um, when someone else is running this so um, we decided to say do clustering beforehand yeah so Thank you. Please enjoy me taking a look.